Question 32A, part two for improving performance was looking at explain how overtraining can be avoided and this was worth five marks. Here's our syllabus, so planning to avoid overtraining, the amount and intensity of training, physiological considerations, psychological considerations, and you know one of these two would have been fine and loss of motivation as an example as well. So they're the three areas we needed. We view our sample. So he talks about here, and you'll notice that just behind, so the amount and intensity of training, you can see that it's a little bit um, different in how it looks because it's been highlighted. But when obviously we scan responses, we lose that highlighting. But he, he has definitely set it out in a correct manner in terms of the highlighting, and you can see by a little bit of the background. So the first one, the amount and intensity of training must be monitored. Talks about different balance between training and recovery. Um, allows improvements but prevents overuse injuries. Gives an example of a basketball player that must ensure they do not overtrain in the gym as this will affect, this effect will, um, will lead to injuries in the legs and loss of maybe a career. By the monitoring of the physiological implications or considerations such as lethargy and injury. Again, you can see that it's sort of a little bit disturbed at the back so it looks a bit different. That's been highlighted. Um, again, so you know, athletes can be watched at training to see how they look. This will indicate whether they are overtraining. For example, a basketball athlete who starts to have poor techniques due to mass practice will become susceptible to injury because they want to train as much as possible, yet they can only bear so much. And fatigue and, you know, and, and underneath the t fatigue and the body's um, technique, such as poor squatting form, will lead to an injury. So that's what they've got to be you know, careful on how you can avoid it by viewing and noticing them. So... This can be seen through tiredness, baggy eyes, and a loss of sleep for the athlete. To avoid this, the coaches can reduce the frequency of training and aim for a short but sharp approach to minimize the volume, but continually improve. So it's nice to see the way it's related, specifically what a coach can do. The last one being psychological implications, such as loss, loss of motivation, which is again, it's specific from our syllabus, again, set out correctly will result in poor performance to resolve loss of motivation. Athletes require time away from the sport. Example, a basketball player will go on vacation or go play golf to take their mind off the sport that then um, you know, invokes motivation as a player can become intrinsically re-motivated. And that's what we need to do. So give them time away. So that's what the thing with this, or the part of this answer was about, was you know, for me ensuring that, if I go back to the syllabus, these three areas were all included and at least one of these two, lethargy or injury, were mentioned. Loss of motivation was covered, but they need to be in there and showing what can be done to avoid that aspect of overtraining. Um, again, the setting out was quite well, uh, quite good. Some boys are, are misspelling physiological and psychological and actually wrote down psychological twice instead of physiological or vice versa. That's just simple mistakes you know, that boys should be avoiding and not doing. It's taking time with your response. Um, just to make sure that you get all the correct information in there.